Hey, good afternoon, everybody. God bless you guys. As always, declaring a very blessed and prosperous and healthy day and evening over you and your family. All right, the title of today's message, The Fall of Lucifer, Be Vigilant at All Times. All right, we're going to go through the primary verses um, that I have found within the Bible about the fall of Lucifer, all right, ultimately the fall of Satan, the power of Satan in this earth, and the power and authority that we have been given in order to stand against it and be vigilant at all times each and every day. So Father, I just thank you, Lord, that yes, in and through Christ Jesus and his finished work of the cross, Satan has already been defeated. And Father, we have been given power and authority to enforce that victory all the days of our lives while we are here on this earth. Father, your Holy Spirit said clearly in 1 John chapter 5 that we know that we are positive, that we are of God, but we know this whole world system around us is under the power of the evil one. But Father, I thank you that each and every one of us have both feet firmly planted in the kingdom system, being in this world but not of this world, and we exercise and utilize that power and authority that we have been given to walk in a place of victory each and every day where we enforce that victory against Satan and his cohorts. And Father, we stand firm in faith by grace with the pure motive of love each and every day. So Father, I thank you for it, Lord, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Okay, so we're going to talk about the fall of Lucifer. Be vigilant at all times. Okay, so I have a couple text of verses here to read, and I believe they are the primary ones out of the Bible when it comes to Satan and Lucifer. I know there's a couple more. But I just want to go through these. I'll post these up on the page so we can take a look. So let's start with Revelation chapter 12. It's very interesting. Revelation chapter 12 is about 17 verses, okay? And it's interesting because it seems as if there was a war that took place in heaven in the spirituals that was very similar to the war that took place on the earth when Jesus was born into this earth and how Satan, through Herod, went after Jesus and tried to kill him and his family. So you're going to have to read, for the sake of time, I'm not going to read the whole chapter. But it talks about this, this war that took place in heaven, all right, where Satan went after the child. He went after the woman. They were able to escape. The same thing that happened when Jesus was born into this earth and had to flee and, go, and, and, and leave and move around out of Bethlehem after he was born. Because Herod sent people to kill him. So let's look here, this war that took place, I'll start chapter 12, verse 7. The, then war broke out in heaven. Michael, all right, three archangels. You had Michael, the warring angel. You had Gabriel, the messenger angel. And you had Lucifer, who was the primary archangel. He was God's number two, known as the, 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 the light and the morning star, okay? Then war broke out, and I'm going to read that to you. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels went forth to battle with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they were defeated, and there was no room found for them in heaven any longer. And that huge dragon was cast down, out, that age-old serpent who was called the devil and Satan. He who was the seducer, the deceiver of all humanity over the world. He was forced out and down to earth, and his angels were flung out along with him. Now, you always hear me quote this. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. The greatest way that Satan can operate in and through somebody is to operate in and through them without them knowing it. That's why he's known as the seducer, the deceiver of all humanity throughout the world. But now as we're moving more into these end times, we're seeing Satan more and more exposed, okay? And when you really start to see the manifestations, the blatant manifestations of Satan in this earth, okay, that, that is not a card that he's holding, right? That's, that's his last card. He's playing his last cards here because he's desperate. The end times, are, the, the time is coming, and he knows that, all right? He was forced out and down to the earth, and his angels were flung out along with him. Then I heard a strong, loud voice in heaven saying, Now it has come, the salvation and the power and the kingdom, the dominion, the reign of our God, and the power, the sovereignty, the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren, he still does that to this day, accusing, accusation, condemnation, guilt, and fear. He who keeps bringing before our God charges against them day and night, saying you're guilty, you're a sinner, you're no good, all of these different things that you are not in and through Christ Jesus and what he has done. 
Be vigilant at all times and know who you are in Christ. That's one of the, 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 the primary ways that we can fend off the enemy and be victorious over him. And rather than being on defense, we can continue to move on the offense and take more ground for the kingdom of God. Amen? He who keeps bringing before our God charges against them day and night has been cast out. Ready? Here's number one. Be vigilant at all times. And they have overcome and conquered him by means of the blood of the Lamb and by the utterance of their testimony. I always talk about the power of spoken words and I always talk about the power of communion, developing your faith in the blood of Christ, partaking of the body and blood each and every day, divine protection, productivity, prosperity. He cannot stand up against the blood, the pleading of the blood, the declaration and decree of the blood of Christ over you and your family. It's already done, thanking and praising God, declaring and decreeing it done, and by the utterance of your testimony, the testimony of who you are in him, what he's done for you and the testimony of the word of God. Be vigilant at all times in walking in these things and exercising these things as you were led and guided by the Spirit to do it. For they did not love life, for they did not love and cling to life even when faced with death. What did Jesus say, remember? He said, those who really desire to follow me, pick up your cross, deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me, amen? Those who try to save their lives will lose it those who are willing to lose their lives will save it for my sake. For they did not love to, they did not love and cling to life even when faced with death, holding their lives, lives cheap till they had to die for their witnessing. Therefore be glad and exalt, O heavens, and you that dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in fierce anger because he knows that he has only a short time left. Well, this was over 2,000 years ago. So we know now that we are close, more, closer now than ever to the end time and the return of Jesus Christ and this whole thing being over, all right? Now I'm talking about being vigilant at all times. But first, let's go back here, and for the sake of time, I'm going to have to do this quickly. Let's go back to the original fall. Ezekiel 28, description here, all right? Now first he's talking about the prince of Tyre, who was a man. Then he's talking about the king of Tyre, or the spiritual influence, and it was Satan himself that had influence over this whole region. And that's what you're seeing right now. There's men up at the top that, quote, are in control, but you better believe there is a spiritual satanic force that's in control of them, that's operating from the top down and implementing all the policies and all the different things you're now seeing taking place in this earth. All right, now he's going to describe Lucifer. Verse 13, you were in Eden, the garden of God, Every precious stone was your covering, the carnelian, topaz, jasper, chrysolite, beryl, onyx, sapphire, carbuncle, and emerald. Your settings and your sockets and engravings were wrought in gold. On the day that you were created, they were prepared. You were the anointed cherub. He had power to create at one point. And the, uh, that covers with overshadowing, wings, and I set you so. You were upon the holy mountain of God. You walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire, like the paved work of gleaming sapphire stone upon which the God of Israel walked on Mount Sinai. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until iniquity and guilt were found in you. So somewhere in that anointing, it was created on the inside. Iniquity and guilt were found in you. Through the abundance of your commerce, you were filled with lawlessness and violence, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you out as a profane thing from the mountain of God, and the guardian cherub drove you out from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was proud and lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I lay you before kings that they might gaze at you. You have profaned your sanctuary by the multitude of your iniquities and the enormity of your guilt, by the unrighteousness of your trade. Therefore, I have brought forth a fire from your midst. It has consumed, and I, it has consumed you, and I have reduced you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who looked upon you. All who know you among the people are astonished and appalled at you. You have come to a horrible end and shall never return to being. Now, once again, for the sake of time, go back and read Ezekiel 28. Look at that and look at the comparison to the things that are going on in this world system. It's all of these characteristics and what happens to men, especially men of unlimited wealth and power and without God, ultimately what it does to them. All right? Another core verse, Revela uh, Isaiah chapter 14, the majority of us know this, but once again, here he goes, talking about the fall of Lucifer, talking about his pride, talking about his pomp, talking about his magnificence. Uh, Isaiah 14, 12, starting, uh, ha for verse 12, I'm sorry. How have you fallen from heaven, O light bringer and day star, son of the morning? 
how you have been cut down to the ground, you who weakened and laid low the nations, O blasphemous satanic king. And you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, and I will sit upon the mount of assembly in the uttermost north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the innermost recesses of the pits. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider, saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world like a wilderness and overthrew its cities, who would not permit his prisoners to return home? Okay? So the end, right? A miserable fall that he was nowhere near as strong as he portrayed himself to be. And he was once the light bringer, the day star. He was God's number two. But ultimately he said, I will be like the most high. There's many different interpretations of what that means. Potentially he got word about God's man and the creation of man who was gonna be created in the exact image of God. And he said, no, I will be like the most high. I'm the one that wants to rule and reign, right? There's only so much information we have. The Holy Spirit can give us more insight and instruction into it. However, once again, I'm reading you what it actually says there. Now it says here, what's the title of the message? The fall of Lucifer. We see that. Becoming Satan. And now Satan has been cast down to this earth. That's why Jesus comes to defeat, to make known the works the enemy has done, to defeat and overcome. And now, like I said, I read this to you all the time. Luke 10, 19, here's what he said with his finished work. Behold, I have given you, you and me, the body of Christ, authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions, physical and mental strength, that's your physical body and your soul, physical and mental strength and ability over all the power the enemy possesses, nothing shall in any way harm you. Well, we know that Satan has come to steal, kill, and destroy. So that promise is conditional upon what? Knowing the power and authority you've been given, developing your faith in it, and learning how to walk in it. Word of your testimony, the blood of the lamb, right? Declaration three, I don't go around all day binding Satan and his cohorts. I make a bold declaration and decree. I declare to you Satan and all principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 18, that you are bound, rebuked, and abolished from myself, from my family, from my ministry, from everyone within my sphere of influence, from my health, from my work, from my finances, in Jesus' mighty name. Declaration and decree, what's the key? Whenever you sense that there's danger on the inside, whenever there's a check in your spirit, that is the time to exercise that power and authority especially. Get ahead of it, practice the declaration and decree, partake of communion, amen? All the different things that we talk about are talking about you being vigilant at all times. Henceforth, we'll close it with this, 1 Peter 5, here's where the message comes from. Verse eight, verse nine and 10, here's the instructions. Be well balanced temperate, sober of mind, be vigilant and cautious at all times. Give the devil no place, no foothold. Be vigilant at all times for that enemy of yours, the devil roams around like a lion, warring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Don't let it be you. He's seeking, if he looks and says, no, they've got the power and authority. They know how to walk in it. I gotta go somewhere else. The Bible says in James four, verse seven, resist the devil and he will flee right? Submit yourself to God, resist the devil and he will flee. Submitting myself to God means I submit myself to his power and authority operating and working in and through me and I'm actually doing it. So that way when the enemy's looking, looking like a fierce lion, right? A lion roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize and devour, he's going to look past me and my family and my ministry. He's going to look past you and your family because he realizes they're armed up. They know their power, they know their authority, and they walk in it, and there's nothing we can do against them. We can't touch their health, we can't touch their finances, we can't touch anything of theirs. And we have to be vigilant in this, all right? Attacks are gonna come, they're gonna happen. Verse nine, withstand him, be firm in the faith against his onset, rooted, established, strong, immovable, and determined, knowing that the same sufferings are appointed to your brotherhood, the whole body of Christians throughout the world meaning he will come after every single believer if he has an opportunity to do it. Verse 10, after you have suffered a little while, you've fought the good fight of fate, you've learned about that power and authority, you've made mistakes, you've been attacked, you've been beaten up, you've now, you're now getting better, you're now getting stronger. After you've suffered a little while, the God of all grace who imparts all blessing and favor, who has called you to his own eternal glory in Christ Jesus will himself complete, 
make you what you ought to be, establish and ground you securely, and strengthen and settle you. Father, I stand on this promise at all times. You said, let patience have its perfect work so that I might be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. And Father, despite how much I might be suffering right now, despite the trial and tribulation and temptation, I have a promise from you and I declare the impartation and manifestation of your grace and you are the one that strengthens me, settles me, grounds me, and establishes me in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for it. We all receive it right now in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a good night.